Hey guys, Monday afternoon. It is the middle of October. All the leaves are almost off the trees now. So this view I'm showing you here would have been more beautiful about a week ago, but still looks pretty nice. Out in the country with uh, my next door neighbor, the guy lives two houses down, found out he rides and uh, we've gone a couple of rides together now. He's got a, he's a new rider this year. He's got a Suzuki 250 Cruiser. Good bike to learn on and uh, he's talking about getting a BMW F or G series for next year. So if he gets an adventure bike like that, we'll be able to go exploring stuff. This will be, uh, I don't normally make regular vlogs. Usually my videos are about going on some adventure or going somewhere. I mean, I guess this is a mini adventure, <coughs> a mini ride, but I'm still debating uh, what kind of bike to get next year. I will be keeping this. I mean, I've put a whole bunch of money into it and I want to enjoy uh, having 330 cc's a full season next year. But I, so yeah, I'm going to add a second bike to my fleet and uh, I'm still torn which way to go. I want to do a little bit of touring. <coughs> Nothing crazy, just on weekends. But <coughs> <laughs> Maybe something a bit longer than that. And, I mean, it has to be cost effective. I mean, the most I can really justify spending is five, six thousand dollars. So the new Ninja 300 really interests me. Good range. <clears throat> a fun sport bike to throw into the corners. Decent power and it's in the price range. But then I watched uh, one of the Quickie Kings videos and an adventure he went on with a buddy of his <coughs> off-road. They went to the top of uh, a mountain and the view is just amazing. And there's so many places like that around here. I can make years worth of videos going to places like that. <coughs> I was jealous, man. I said, I want to go there. But I need a bike that can go there, a real dual sport. And for where I live, yeah, we got some decent paved roads like this, cool windy stuff. But all the coolest places around here are definitely off the beaten path. But again, in that price range, you know, five, six thousand dollars for something new, there isn't a lot of options other than the dual sport version of this, the KLX 250S which I would be totally happy with. And it's got tons of aftermarket support, so there's lots of things you can do to tweak it. Because it's not the most exciting bike stock, that's for sure. And then the Honda CFR 250L, which uh, gets you fuel injected, Honda reliability, a new bike, so it doesn't have tons of uh, aftermarket support. And from what I'm reading, it's like not. I would think the KLX is a little more of a serious off-road machine than the the Honda. Both are going to come in the five five thousand dollar range, and there really aren't too many other options in that price range. I don't want a KLR650 if I throw some knobbies on this thing. This thing's better off-road than a KLR 650. It's just too big and cumbersome. Yeah, so maybe I'm not torn about what to get. I mean, after watching that video, I mean, this is, got, this is an acceptable street machine. All I need to do is get a bigger gas tank and I can tour on this thing happily. As long as I can get 200k out of a tank, a little more than 200k, which I could with the IMS gas tank. I definitely want something 300 pounds or less. Uh, KTM has a street legal enduro. I forget the exact uh, designation, but it's a 350. <coughs> That's street legal, legal, fuel injected. 
but it's uh, ten thousand dollars, and that's just I can't justify that at all. If I was going to spend that kind of money, it would be my only bike. Considering I'd also have to insure both both bikes, this bike and the other new bike. So I'm taking my neighbor out on these uh, back roads. He's, uh, I don't think he's born and raised here, so he's never been out here. It's always cool showing people places that they've never been. Oh yeah, there's the Yamaha WR. Uh, awesome bike, but uh, a little bit more expensive than I want to I want to spend. And then they have the XT250. Man, that thing looks like it's freaking 40 years old, but they did actually upgrade it to fuel injection this year. <coughs> but they didn't do anything about upgrading the styling. Like, <coughs> the thing looks like a relic. So yeah, maybe there's about three weeks of decent riding left. I think last year, I did my last ride November 14th. But uh, this, Fall seems a lot cooler right off the bat. Things could theoretically warm up a little bit again, but hard to say. You know you're in the country, you're dealing with a one-lane bridge. I gotta wait up for my buddy. The road's a little bit bumpy too, and I have to remember, you know, on this bike you don't have to slow down for anything, but he's riding a cruiser with just a few inches of travel, so probably feels the bump way more than I do. There's like a line of gravel here in the middle the whole time, pretty much constantly, so puts a damper on the fun. Gorgeous country. One lane bridge. Yeah, this bike will tour. I mean, with the increase in displacement, it has acceptable highway performance. It passes even better than it did before, obviously, and uh, all it needs is more range. And the IMS gas tank, which is three gallons, which I think is a little over 11 liters, will solve that. And then this will be my street machine, and I will pick up a 250 Dual Sport give it some uh, harder core tires, some more off-road oriented tires. Look at that. Yowza. Beautiful. So we're coming up here onto a high point in the area and uh, the view from up top is quite stunning. So just around this chicane Absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous. 